Marvel's Avengers is easily one of the most ambitious AAA video game projects to be released this generation. Developed by the team that worked on the Tomb Raider reboot, Marvel's Avengers aims to take the developer's classic cinematic platforming and apply it to the Avengers IP as an online co-op service game. Despite being called Marvel's Avengers, this is more truly a story about Pakistani-American teenager and biggest Marvel superhero fan, Kamala Khan. After a tragic event that comes during Avengers Day, Kamala finds herself with newly given powers in a world without the Avengers. Now it's up to her and a growing rebellion to track down the members of the Avengers for a reunion against a new global dictatorship threat. Vague story details aside for the sake of not spoiling the game, I thought Marvel's Avengers did a fantastic job at telling a coming-of-age story for Kamala under the veil of a superhero origin story, but one from the perspective of someone living in a world with well-established heroes. Her story also feels like it works well because it hasn't been touched by the MCU yet. The elephant in the room is that the rest of the Marvel heroes feel like actors playing the MCU characters, which isn't directly a problem with the game, but more of a problem with how iconic the MCU has become. Kamala hasn't been covered in the MCU yet, and thus following her story arc in this game feels like a breath of fresh air in the entertainment genre that the MCU has no doubt taken over. Kamala in the leading role is an endearing and lovable character, seeing her grow up from a child superhero fan to a teenager ready to learn to fight alongside the Avengers that she looked up to was a beautiful character arc, and seeing her persona grow both literally and figuratively was a fantastic time. Marvel's Avengers has a little bit of everything. It has a single player campaign, online co-op missions, and it's also a live service game in the making. Because of this, there's no doubt that the title will draw countless comparisons to other service games like The Division and Destiny 2. The single player campaign that took about 10 to 12 hours to complete features a lot of gameplay staples Crystal Dynamics has established with their Tomb Raider series, but now only with superhero powers involved. As Miss Marvel, you can leap onto edges, swing onto objects to make far jumps, and so on. Her superpowers are ingrained within the platforming and it's not just for her either. As you get the Avengers back together, they'll join your roster of playable characters. Hulk, for example, can't stretch like Miss Marvel can, but can make giant leaps onto walls and hang onto them with his bare grip. As more of the Avengers join the team, the narrative starts to break from a linear story to a more open hub where you can choose which missions to go on, whether integral to the story or not. And despite these playable characters being superheroes, Crystal Dynamics does a great job at not just making them feel like overpowered characters compared to villains. Each character had cinematic set pieces that made each of them feel memorable and iconic. However, the story wasn't afraid to also put them in situations where they were outnumbered or were wounded to the point of affecting their traditional overpowered status. Each character also plays somewhat differently, though they have similar controls. Almost like how Smash Brothers has every character having similar controls, yet different moves and playstyles. The same can be said with the Avengers. Each character has light and heavy attacks along with the dodge, parry, and block move to defend against enemies. The enemies, on the other hand, didn't feel like they had much variety between them, especially when playing as Iron Man. Perhaps it's that his gameplay feels a bit too repetitive with just launching range attacks that didn't feel like they had much of an impact as the other heroes. When it came to missions, they were hit or miss depending on the type of missions they were. For example, the most story-centric missions were fun. They felt uniquely designed for the narrative and had a payoff for completing them. This is when Avengers shined as an authentic story being told both from a writing standpoint and a gameplay perspective. The same can be said for a lot of the side missions that, like Iron Man's gameplay, felt shallow and repetitive most of the time. These missions would have me destroying key points or regarding certain parts of the map. These missions felt like competitive multiplayer game modes being applied to a co-op mode instead, just badly mismanaged. On the other hand, some of the co-op missions are done well. These are the ones where each hero feels like they uniquely play their part in the gameplay. I just wish that was applicable to all of the content and not just some of it. Of course, you do get rewarded regardless of the mission types in the form of points or new abilities for your character. Each character has a three-part upgrade system with over 100 abilities to unlock for them. These also fill your power levels for characters, which also act like level gates for some of the later mission content. Here's where the life service game comparisons will most likely be. While gaining new abilities is always fun, getting new loot isn't, at least not in this game. It's weird to find a chest in a mission that has a higher level arm or spine for a Hulk. No cosmetic changes to the character that let me show off my work in the game, just a higher number digit on my stats that feel like it barely did anything. At least there are costumes that you can unlock that are a great fan service for fans of the comics. After completing the single player campaign, you'll quickly realize just how much more content there is to play through. 
all the post-game missions further unlock more experience towards new abilities and power levels that essentially fuel the life service aspect of Avengers. At the moment, I'm not really a big fan of the post-game content. Where the campaign felt like a steady growth arc, the life service aspect feels boring, repetitive, and just not rewarding at the moment. Perhaps that'll change once new characters arrive with their own content and stories. I imagine, or rather hope, that they'll be like raids or expansions for Destiny. At the moment though, nothing really entices me to keep playing Avengers past its single player campaign, which was really just the one thing that caught my eye. It's without a doubt that Marvel's Avengers is one intensive game for current generation hardware. When it comes to the base consoles, PS4 and Xbox One S, Avengers runs at 1080p on PS4 and 720p on Xbox One S, both targeting 30fps, but frequently dropping to the mid to low 20fps. While PS4 is more consistently hitting 30fps than the Xbox One, to call it a stable performance would be a disservice. On Xbox One X, performance hits a native 4K at a mostly consistent 30fps, though with the occasional drops. PS4 Pro, on the other hand, uses a checkerboard 4K with the same 30fps target, but more frequently drops frames than the Xbox One X. Both of the Pro console models offer a performance mode that drops the resolution to 1080p for a higher, but very inconsistent frame rate. In this performance mode, consoles usually hit around the mid-40fps, but rarely did it ever hit a consistent 60fps. If anything, it just made the gameplay more unstable. I primarily played my review experience on PC running a GTX 1070 and an i7-4790K. I was able to run Avengers with a high preset at 1080p, hovering around mid 50 to 60 FPS mark. Next-gen ports have already been announced for PS5 and Series X, and like Control demonstrated last year, this was probably a game that was more meant for next-gen consoles than current-gen ones. Performance details aside, Marvel's Avengers looks great. There's so much destruction, mayhem, and oh boy, the particle effects. The particle effects. It's no wonder this game is so GPU intensive with all the explosions and superpowers on display. Animation work is also stellar, shining best during the cinematic set pieces that are the highest points of the visuals in this game. Ultimately, Avengers proves to be one of the best looking games this generation, but one you'll probably need to break the bank to even get to run well. Otherwise, you'll be coming across frame rate issues, low resolution, and just odd rendering bugs. Marvel's Avengers has quite the cast of characters and actors portraying them. Troy Baker nails a timid but smart Bruce Banner, Nolan North captures Tony Stark's big ego almost too well to the point of making him actually annoying, and Laura Bailey perfectly portrays a fierce black widow that can kick anyone's butt. I had no problems with the casting here, as just about everyone does a great job, especially Sandra Saad as Kamala Khan. Just as diverse as these characters are, so is the soundtrack behind the whole thing. While one central Avengers theme plays and really is the backbone behind the game's music, the sub-themes for all the heroes stood out to me the most. I love the little touches of how Iron Man and Thor's feature heavier rock aspects as opposed to the other characters. Their instruments and music represent each of the characters' personalities respectively. Like a lot of service games, it's hard to determine what type of game Avengers is going to be in the next year or so. I'm reviewing this game as it is at launch, so take that into consideration when you're watching this review. At launch, I really enjoyed Marvel's Avengers single player campaign. I thought the narrative was well crafted, the heroes were portrayed mostly well, sorry Tony, and the set pieces were fantastic. I just have a lot of gripes with the live service and multiplayer aspect. Some of the co-op missions work, but the majority of them are repetitive and boring. The rewards or incentives aren't that great, and thus, there are not a lot of incentive for me to keep playing past the single player mode. Had all the effort been put into really fleshing out the campaign more, I think this could have easily been a higher rated game. Sadly, instead, it feels like half a great game and half a bad game. Of course, that can all be changed once the life service aspect gets updated with new missions and characters, but at the moment it feels like a mismanaged mess.